Hi everybody, my name is Andreas and I'm the product manager of Epic SumUp. I've been working in the Atlassian ecosystem for 12 years now and my passion is project management. In 2014, we started Uptis as a new company. We had the idea to create great products for the marketplace and help our customers to get the most out of the Atlassian tools. So we started our first Atlassian services and built our first apps in early 2015. Epic SumUp, an app for lean project management, was initially developed in March 2015 and our first sale was in June 2015. It was a $10 deal and of course we went to our favorite steakhouse to celebrate this milestone. Since the beginning, we have had a lot of customers from different areas like Atlassian, some IT and e-training. That led us to a multi-project management situation. As there were so many small projects and all given tools were too oversized, we started working with lean project management. This means use Jira and add the needed functions to close the gap. The project should be easy and fast to set up and flow like an issue. That was the start of using Epic SumUp for lean project management. Epic SumUp is an app that helps you to do quick and easy live reports for a better overview of your project issues and it helps you to bulk edit many issues at once very fast. But now let's get back to topic. Recalibration of projects is a task every project manager has had to do sometime. Over the years, most of us have developed their own system depending on requirements and project size. But how do you recalibrate your projects? In this talk, I'm going to share a simple four steps process we use when we face project overwhelm. We not only focus on what to do when project overwhelm happens, but on how to prevent it in the future. Any project manager can encounter project overwhelm at any given time. It happens. This overwhelm isn't a sign of a project manager's incompetency. Not at all. This project overwhelm is inevitable. It is a sign of business growth and an increase in the demand for productivity. Sometimes things just change and you have underestimated the impact of your projects. There are many reasons that can lead to overload and often enough it's a combination of many small things that are just too much at the end. I think everyone knows how it feels if you get overwhelmed and this is not a good mood to stay for a long time. So what helps us to get out of this is a simple plan to follow, hoping that you won't need it too often. But if you know there is a safety ring you can easily use, gives hope. And hope is a very strong motivator. The first step in solving the problem is identifying there is too much going on. This is not the easiest part. Project managers often have the feeling that they can handle any short-term overload on the fly. And it's hard to identify when a lot of work is turning into overwhelm. Usually things are getting worse slowly and like the frog in the pot, you suddenly find yourself in trouble. So here are five indicators that can help you to identify when it's time to recalibrate. First of all, it's the error in estimations. This is something quite common as nobody of us can predict the future and misestimations happen. But if this happens too often, it can have another reason. When people get stressed, they start making mistakes and the overall duration raises by corrections, bad quality or misunderstandings. This results directly into missed deadlines. A small amount of overtime work can be compensated with other tasks that are smaller than expected. But if there is less room for corrections, things push each other over the deadlines. Well, you and your team might want to save the project and the deadlines. You deprioritize smaller tasks and particular parts of the job to gain speed again. This can lead into an too early, yes, we are almost done state. Not fully completing parts of the job is the third sign that you should not ignore. When things are getting stuck in your project, you might have a pile of work in progress or a long list of tasks waiting for QA. This disturbed flow of work contains many risks. The feeling of a never-ending road of work 
or the potential rework as a result of too late QA can make your project throughput unpredictable. And worst of all, your team signals burnout symptoms. This is a strong sign that your workload is much too high. You and your team may start to move work from one to another to save time. But this is already a sign of losing control. And even worse, that people get sick by the overload of work. Of course, everything here is communicating and impacting each other. But with these signs, you can do an easy health check of your project landscape. And if you see some of these signs, or even all, it is time to act. If things get worse and you see that there is a need of action to get back on the road, you should consider a recalibration. A recalibration means adjusting what to do and even more important, what not. If you see yourself heading in the wrong direction, it is time to stop and recalibrate. And now I'm going to show you four simple steps you can follow to get your projects back on track. If things are already serious, you should start at step one, the most important one. Take a break. You should stop and take a deep breath. So shut off all incoming requests and hold new items off so that you and your team can recharge your batteries and then reassess your work. A running machine cannot be readjusted. So first of all, it's necessary to calm down and get an overview of your moving items. Save your team from outside and internal pressure as long as you don't have a better overview of what is happening and why. When this is done, you can proceed to step number two. The second step is to conduct a tiered checking. What's that? We are talking about priorities, categorization of your projects into different priority levels. Tier one is the most important one because there is a real danger of damage. Start with the projects that are visibly late or already overdue. Project management tools will help you to find the problematic ones. Have in mind that most of these projects will need an extension for their completion. This is the job of the project manager to negotiate and reassign the work using the data based on your known project progress. Make sure that there is no roadblocks for these projects. If they cannot be completed yet, they have to move into tier number two. So, Tier 1 is like finishing urgent things that can be finished, so they are no longer a possible block for other projects. In Tier 2, we have all the projects that are blocked or delayed by bottlenecks. Tier 2 contains all projects that cannot complete it without removing these obstacles. This can be a missing resource, absences of your team or teammates, a wait state from outside, unfulfilled external or internal dependencies or any other failures that cause this delay or block. The project manager should face these blocks and start removing them one by one so that the projects can process again. Now they can be planned and assigned to the team, respecting the estimates for open work items. So this tier is about resolving all blocked issues to get your projects in progress again. When this is going on, your team will get back into a flow again and you have to take care that things are planned well to stay in a work serialization. If this is done, you can take care of new projects and issues that are coming up, if there is room for more. Tier 3 contains all projects or issues that are not planned yet, so they are somehow new and can be planned against the available team resources. Thanks to the straight and realistic planning of Tier 1 and 2, you will be able to assign them to the right people that have the time available. It is important not to overload the team again or negotiate with the client to extend too tight deadlines, as this will end up in the mess that you have just resolved. This is where you have to decide if a project is possible to start regarding to the available capacity. And maybe you have to say no at this point. That's okay. You have to control what can be added to your flow of work so project overwhelm doesn't happen so soon again. In Tier 1, you have planned 
and replant the projects that can be done. The projects that can't be done, any hour are handled in tier two, which makes them uh, tier one by time. And tier three is about controlling what comes in at the beginning of your workflow. If this is under control, you can take care of your regular work as a project manager. This includes handling of all stable projects, communications, change requests, and completing the done projects. So this time can be used to finish things and give them to accounting, pay out contractors and analyzing the work that is done. You want to use gathered information to learn and improve your upcoming projects. Now is the time to proceed to the next step and prevent that this overwhelm will happen again. So sometimes projects start overwhelming you, not naturally by your fault, but sometimes it just happens. Preventing these situations would be great, although we know it is not possible to control everything. But what you can do is to create measurements and metrics that help you to see the early signs of an upcoming problem. We have some signs mentioned before, and this is a good starting point to create visuals that help you to visually indicate your project health. First of all, you should think about the metrics that are relevant to you and should be covered by those visuals. My personal favorite visual is a progress bar that gives me a fast idea of the actual progress and budget of my project. Of course, progress bar should wrap up the project as a whole, not just a part of it. So here are some examples of meaningful progress bars. One very good metric is the time spent at the project as an overall. The time you have estimated and planned in comparison to the actual consumed time is a really good indicator for the quality of estimations. Another very important one is the overall cost of a project as a whole. The overall cost of a project should include internal and external cost. Internally could be the salaries of your team working on the project. When team members do not work full time at the project, it's relevant how much time they spend with their task and so how much cost this produces for the project. External costs could be contractors, hardware, licenses and more things that produce directly assignable costs. If your project has an overall budget, you will have a good feeling if you're still being in the revenue zone. Maybe you work with story points and want to see the progress of your stories and epics. That's another good metric for a progress bar as it shows the progress the development has done so far. The last example can be the progress based on status so that you can see what is in to do, a work in progress or already done. These are just a few examples of metrics that can help you to see the health state of your project. For a time-based progress, you could use some roadmaps that help you plan and display the status of your projects on a map, including the different stages. This helps you to see the progress of the timeline and gives you hints about upcoming deadlines. The timeline is a different view on your progress as it shows you if you need more resources or have to change some delivery dates in order to hit the deadlines. There are many road mapping tools around that can help you to create these views. This example is the app Swanly by Jexo. And now you need a cockpit view that allows you to see if everything is on track. Think of a dashboard showing you all the relevant information for your projects at a glance. What you want to see exactly is of course up to your personal preference, but it should give you a good feeling of being on track or, if not, where you should take a closer look at. In this example, we use the progress bars from Epic SumUp on a dashboard gadget as it gives you a live report and drill down. But you might want to use your favorite diagrams and visuals and combine them to your personal cockpit. At the end, it shall give you a sense of what's going on without heavy reporting. Now your day may start with a quick check on your dashboard to see if all projects are running smoothly. And it's a good feeling of being in control. Now that you're in a good flow of control, you can move on to the last step. This is about applying the lessons learned from finished or ongoing projects. As reality is constantly evolving, estimations and objectives may have to be changed over time. This gain of knowledge leads to adjustments in planning and tracing the ongoing work. 
While changing the timelines and pushing the due dates can help in some projects, it is not a scalable solution. With your visuals and data in place, you are able to change things way ahead, so that this won't lead into trouble anytime soon again. What can you learn from these data insights? You can look out for some time consumption that goes beyond estimations and find out why this happens. If you can make sure that this is no tracking error, it is helpful to find the reasons for such an extent. Maybe there was a change that was not respected by your re-estimation. This often happens if changes are not handled good enough. A customer feedback is a valuable change that is a good reason for change, but, sh but that should not lead to a broken planning. The customer has no responsibility for the consequences, but the project manager has. So this could be a good outcome of the analysis. Another good reason could be that the estimation does not cover the help of other people to help in this item. A simple version of this error could be a not doubled effort for pair programming. Or it is simply an overdue because of a lack of knowledge about the task. But whatever the reason is, you can add this to the list of lessons learned for the next projects or double check the running task for similar problems. I think the most important metric for a project manager is the cost of your project. This will be accounted against a customer's order or against an internal budget. But in both cases, you may get into trouble if you break these budgets. Problems here can have some reasons that are not simply explainable by time extension. Let's assume that the calculated licenses or hardware go beyond your budget. With a good analysis tool, you are able to find these problems and solve the problems while occurring or learn from it afterwards. Anyway, learning from done or running projects is the key for improving your control system. If you change metrics, your visuals, or commit to new policies, it's an ongoing process to stay on track. And as a result, you will have a smoothly running project landscape that is able to handle a few changes without directly running into overwhelming again. We have seen that overwhelming can happen anytime, which is okay, but it's good to have a simple process to get back on track again. I have shown our approach in four easy steps. First of all, calm down and take a break. Followed by a tiered check-in and make the work flow again. Then, create or improve your visuals to see early indicators. And use your data to improve estimations and planning. I hope that this simple process helps you to get back on the road. I really appreciate your feedback and don't hesitate to contact me. If you like this content, I would like to point you to our ebook that has a lot more of this. Just call the URL or send me an email. And if you want to visit us at our food truck, look out for this lovely car. We are available for discussion, questions and of course product demos of Epic Sum Up. I would be happy to see you there. And last but not least, I want to thank Biro and Nikki for this really great event and the chance to be part of it. Thank you all and see you soon.